Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. Can he bring it to ya? Creature features and all creatures. Period of civil war. Rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil Galactic Empire. During the battle, rebel spies managed to steal secret plans for the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star. That is not the Star Wars theme. Of course it isn't. It is Gustav Holst's Mars the Bringer of War, which seemed to be the inspiration for many of the themes John Williams used in Star Wars. Legal said Disney would sue our trousers off if I use the actual movie theme. But Gustav Holst would not sue us because he is dead and couldn't give to- Shall we then proceed with the introduction? Indeed. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent Van Dahl. With me is my dutifully dedicated major domo of Polter Mansion, the musically observant intruder of introductory diatribes, the dashing Mr. Livingston. And over to this side, cradling a bundle of dynamite that, in the spirit of safety, has not yet been wired for detonation, is the delicate and dainty lady of the manor, the lovely Miss Tangella. And have we a fantastical show from a galaxy far, far away in store for you. First up, we'll be joined by Steve Sansweet, owner and operator of Rancho Obi-Wan, the largest Star Wars collection in the world. He'll tell us all about his amazing facility, give us the story of its origin, and maybe even bring an item or two from the collection. Oh, and we'll also show you footage from a Tangela guided tour of Rancho Obi-Wan. You won't want to miss that. Movie-wise, we shall present a remarkable turdling of a film tonight. Star Odyssey from 1979. Originally titled Sete Yo Mini Dior Nello Spazio, this translates from Italian to Seven Gold Men from Space. That alone should tell you everything you need to know about this film. But for those of you still not entirely sure, it is a quite rather bad attempt to mimic and ride on the mighty coattails of George Lucas's greatest film. If you haven't yet seen it, we have no doubt you'll be most amused. If you have seen it prior, apologies in advance for foisting this cinematic lump of coal upon you yet again. Did I miss anything? I believe you've said it all. Good. So don't go away, because it shall be another night of intergalactic fright, right here on Creature Beachers! Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Welcome to Creature Features. It's Saturday night. 
And yeah, we've got we've got quite a good. You know, he gave up his Saturday night. You normally go to the disco on Saturday night. Absolutely, you know? the Star Wars disco. You know, I, that's the one thing I don't like about doing a show on Saturday night is we ruin all the disco dancing in the area. But uh, he gave it up tonight because we've got uh, Steve Sansweet from Rancho Obi Wan. I wanted to ask you about how you came up with that name in a bit, but uh, it's a, it's it's a huge collection. It's a it's a museum. It's like the Sp Smithsonian. Of Star Wars, right? It is indeed. We've got like 350,000 to 400,000 items in the My collection. My goodness. Guinness World Record. You must have a computer database that uses a very large hard drive to keep track of indeed. all these. My goodness. But you probably remember them all. You probably remember everything. I right? remember a lot visually. There's some things that still trick me and right. I buy duplicates of oh, or no. I insist, oh, I don't have that. I have to buy it on eBay and somebody oh, my says, goodness. check first. Right, right. That's a smart move. Anyways, he's got the greatest collection of Star Wars stuff in the world, both um, things that other people can buy and things that nobody has seen or known about before, like props. We, we took a visit there on, uh, was it Sunday? And we took Tangela and she did a little video came out wonderful you have to stay till the end of the show though to see it because uh that's that's gonna be fun you can see the inside of the place and everything but uh we're gonna talk to steve about uh his wonderful facility and we're gonna watch this film star odyssey and you haven't seen it either i have not no, you know so i've seen this film only in pieces and all you have to do is see a tiny piece to know you don't want to see the rest it's that bad it is no no i would not lie so why are you wearing it uh, you know, the reason why we're running it is because it is the only movie in our library which was anything related to Star Wars. There were a lot of similar movies that came right. out in that time period. Yes. Which had the word star or had posters that had Star Wars ships like the Millennium Falcon in them. Riding the coattails of George Lucas. Indeed. That's terrible. Well, we're going to talk about some of those, but uh, let's get this film started. When we come back, I want to hear the entire origin story of your wonderful facility. Okay. All right, off we go to Star Odyssey 1979. Uh, if you don't stay for the movie, at least stay for the guests. I don't know what to make of this. I mean, we, we should have just spent the money and bought Star Wars, right? <laughs> no, that's a, that's a movie we should be showing tonight. It's Star Wars, not not this. So uh, there's an evil man in the galaxy, and he's uh, he's attacking Earth, and they they sent Hollywood, a bloke named Hollywood. Makes go, sense to me. I would never send a bloke named Hollywood to save the Earth. That would be ridiculous. No, you, you send actual warriors, not like party goers. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the show. We are watching Star Odyssey, blah, blah, blah. But we are joined by Steve Sansweet, and he's got the largest Star Wars collection in the, in the universe, right? In the galaxy. No, I think in the entire universe. Which is bigger, the galaxy or the, yeah, universe, the universe? is all You're galaxies. Right. You're right. Many galaxies. So in, in a galaxy far, far away, and even in this galaxy, he has the largest Star Wars collection. So I, I must ask, how did you get into all this? Well, I grew up being a collector. Baseball cards when I was right. a kid, comic books, bottle caps, Dixie cup lids of ice cream, right. movie stars. I bet your mother loved that. No, she, yeah. said, she would always say, who does this right. junk? Right, right. Well, she used a different word. Right. Um, so I saw Star Wars. Before I saw Star Wars, I started collecting Japanese space toys, robots and rocket ships, because I love science fiction and right. fantasy growing up. Right. Read a lot of books. Star Wars came out. I saw it on the back lot of 20th Century Fox 10 days before it opened because I was a journalist in Los Angeles working for the Wall Street Journal and got blown away. And I walked up to the guy who took my... my uh, advanced ticket and said, could I have that? So I got something for my collection. Right. still have it. That was the beginning of your collection. 
Well, there was actually the one, one item that was before that, a promotional brochure that they sent to movie theaters right. and to journalists to try to get them to book Star Wars. I remember Wars. this. This was a nice slick thing that they yes. put out, right? Yes, lots of color photos right. and descriptions of the characters. And it came to the reporter at the Wall Street Journal office in L.A. who covered the movie business. He looked at it. He threw it away. When he left for the day, I tiptoed over to the trash right. can. And that was my first dumpster diving for Star Wars, but not the last. I remember those. You know, I, I, I received one of those from a friend. And he said, oh, my friend at the press gave it to me. And, you know, what, what, what's something like that worth today? A lot of money, right? That original it's press. Several hundred dollars at least. At least, right. And it's amazing. So that was the beginning. But you still did many things before. And then you went to work for George. I got a call from Lucasfilm. I had started writing books. I wrote my first book in 1991. It came out called Star Wars from Concept to Screen to Collectible about how Star Wars went from an idea in George's mind to how they did it on screen to the merchandise, which I'm a firm believer really has helped Star Wars become the phenomenon Absolutely. that it's become. Right. So um, I got a call from Lucasfilm saying, do you know anybody who would take a one year only job going out and talking to fans and letting them know about the Star Wars special editions which were coming out in 1997. George right. messed around with the Star Wars movies and was re-releasing them right. on the big screen. And I said, let's talk. And I left my job after 26 years at the Wall Street Journal and went to Lucasfilm for a guaranteed one year only job and they just forgot to fire me for 15 years. 15 years. Right, of course. So I became head of fan relations, and it was a wonderful job oh meeting fans goodness. all over the world. Right. So you would go to, like, conventions and things conventions, like that? Conventions. And that first summer, they, uh, they expected me to do eight to ten conventions, and I did about 40 My through goodness. the fall. 40 conventions yeah. a year. We had some great clips to show and talked about the special editions, and it was a blast. That's incredible. Well, I want to hear more about your life at Lucasfilm, but uh, I'm going to say that we've got to get back to the movie, Star Odyssey. What do you think is going to happen next? Something good? Maybe Hollywood can get... That would be nice. That would be nice. But then we'd have to like talk the rest of the night because the oh, movie would okay. be over, so I, I suppose that won't happen. Stick around. We will be back soon with Mr. Steve Sansweet after Star Odyssey. See you on the other side of the break. Welcome back to the show. We are watching Star Odyssey with Mr. Steve Sansweet, who has stepped away and been replaced by this one. But, you know, we do this every week because she's very, you know, I understand she's been asking nicely now. Oh, that's good. Now, in the old days, she would stab the guest with a knife. Well, she'd prod them. No, she would poke them very hard with a pointy object. So she asked him nicely if she could take over for one segment, and uh, here we are. So we're going to do some mail because we got all kinds of mail, did we not? We did. Well, let's, let's start with one. From, from Jennifer Stein. Jennifer Stein. How are you, Mr. Livingston? I'm well, thank you. How are well? you? How'd you like that introduction with the music and all that? That was rather confusing. Yeah, he's, he's actually quite musically inclined. He just does not... Uh, Act like he is. All right, Jennifer Stein says, oh, this is, I, I suppose, to Tangela. So you're going to have to talk tonight and answer some questions. Uh, we just watched the host segments from The Gorilla. When did we do That was a while ago, was it not? Long time ago. Uh, Tangela was cute and adorable with them. In many ways, she reminds me of myself as a teenager. I bet we'd be great friends. My high school chemistry teacher was a pyrotechnic who gladly blew things up for our entertainment. It was a terrific way to end a school day. I ended up liking chemistry and making up chemistry puns. My fantasy pet is a three-headed black cat named Isotope. Each part would be named after the three isotopes of carbon, C10, C12, and C14. I have no idea what she's talking about, do you? 
I'll talk to you about it later. Well, you know, I fail chemistry. Yes, indeed. Well, no, but I was a musical prodigy. Yes. So, you know, the power goes to one place or another, and I did not get it in chemistry. All right, here's a question. Do you have any pets? She has an entire menagerie. No, was it last week we had your little Too pooch many. out here? The dog was here last Fang. week. Fang. Yeah, he's a nice little dog, but sometimes he poops in the wrong place. Uh, she goes, uh, my hobbies are movies, games, and music. Do you have any hobbies? She collects dead things. This is what she does. And, you know, I, I think she takes them without permission. Yeah, this is true. No, there's a, there's a graveyard. There's a graveyard. She cannot go to the graveyard. She's banned from the graveyard. There's an actual sign that says, Tangela not allowed. Yeah, and she it's ignores true. it. She ignores it. Uh, so that's a hobby. It's one of many. Uh, thank you for writing, Jennifer. You know, when they email us, they never tell us where they're from. Yeah, when they write in the post, we have to see the postmark so right. we know. So if you're going to email us, friends at home, tell us where you're from, because it's nice to talk about hometowns, right? Yes. It is. All right, next up, Mr. Livingston. This is from Portland, Oregon, David Montgomery. Portland, Oregon, David Montgomery. I wonder if he's any relation to Elizabeth. Elizabeth Montgomery. Elizabeth Montgomery. Yeah, she's dead, you know. Quite. We're going to be showing an Elizabeth Montgomery movie soon, and it's not going to be... Um, the Legend of Lizzie Borden. It's a different one. It's a good one. Forty Wax. That was that last movie. Monty, Portland, Oregon, Vincent Tangella, and Mr. Livingston. You could keep the shipping container, sir. And it looks like a fabulous card. Oh, it is a fabulous card. Look at this. This is... I didn't know Hallmark carried this. It says, thank you, creature features. Hmm. No, Hallmark, right? I don't see a price. Maybe it's not Hallmark. All right, here we go. It goes, oh my goodness, there was cash. Yes, bring me cash. 20 American dollars? No, how much is, well, before you steal it, tell us how much. 40, 40 American dollars. All right, with a beautiful card. It must have been made by Monty. And he goes, dear Creature Features, three generations of my family watch your program every Saturday night. All I want to say is, well done. My daughter and I are former residents of Sonoma County, and it's like going home every Saturday. We love it. Monty in Portland. Well, thank you so much, uh, Monty and the Monty family. You suppose this is his last name? That's all he put was Monty. It's not like Mr. Monty. It's like... Monty family, it? perhaps. It could be the Montys. The Montys in Portland. Well, thank you so much. I, I love this card. I, where do we get these cards? You know, we could sell these. I, I bet you we, we'd make $50 or at least $40 on these, right? Perhaps. Selling cards. Portland, Oregon. I hear it's hot up there right now in Portland. It's hot everywhere. Right. Next up, Mr. Livingston. This is from British Columbia, Canada. Oh, our friends, the pages, the young pages. I thought there was two of these. There were. We're going to save one for next week. Next week. So we're going to show one today. So two sisters up in... Uh, Merritt, British Columbia, sent us this, these, and uh, we are saving the next one for next week. So we're doing this one first, and this one is from Melanie. Melanie. Melanie Page. Be careful, art inside. <laughs> no, I've never seen that warning label before. Be careful, art inside. Was that for the postman or for me? For the post. All right, what do we got? We've got, you know, it looks like she drew Pikachu. Is that Pikachu? No? That's not Pikachu. I don't know these things. All right. She made a, a title card called Mail Time. We'll put a big one up there. And that goes to you. She goes, uh, Dear Creature Features, this is a good Mail Time poster. This drawing is a grasshopper, dragon grasshopper wing. I know I haven't mailed in a long time, but I still love making hangness drawing. What's a hangness drawing? Maybe heinous? Heinous? No. Well, maybe. No, she's writing hangness drawings. Uh, maybe it's these characters. We'll put a big one up and, and, and she could write in and identify. Um, but she made all these drawings and we're putting a big one up now. And uh, what else? She's got another one here, which is rather wonderful. 
And finally, this, this flying frog, which is incredible. And last, this is, a, this is a photo of something, which she does not explain. But what do you think this is? Don't you have a toy that looks like this? No? I don't know. In any case, thank you so much, Melanie, for writing. We hope uh, you and the family are doing well. And tell your sister we're going to have her letter next week, right? Yes. You promise you won't forget. I will not yeah, forget. Because they're on mm. YouTube, and they will file a complaint with YouTube and, and get us in lots of trouble. So you won't allow that to happen, right? I will not allow that to he's, happen. He's a man of his word. Any more? That's it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us email of your own, send it to this address here, but include your city, please. Or if you'd like to send us hand-drawn photos, like our small friend Melanie Page up in British Columbia, send it to this address here. We'll be right back with Steve from Rancho Obi-Wan. But first, let's get back to Star Odyssey, 1979. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features, watching Star Odyssey with our friend Steve Sansweet from Rancho Obi-Wan. That's Kenobi for those who didn't know. Obi-Wan. Yeah, someone was asking me, how do, how do they know it's, it's like a Star Wars related thing if it's called Rancho Obi-Wan? I mean, if you put Obi-Wan on anything, <laughs> you know it's Star Wars, right? Absolutely. And Obi-Wan is my favorite character, thus the name of Rancho Obi-Wan. Of course. He was the mentor. He was the one who led Luke Skywalker to go on his amazing journey. That's right. No, and he was he was uh, Sir uh, Alec Guinness at one point, which was and Ewan McGregor is the follow-up. So you can't go wrong with either of those yeah. actors. I like Ewan. Oh, you know, I like saying his name in in Scottish. I like to go Ewan McGregor. Very no, good. it's just it just rolls off the tongue. Anyways, uh, Star Odyssey. Uh, so this this film is, as you said, one of the knockoffs that came out after the original Star Wars. I mean, how many of these must there be? Dozens. And Dozens. In fact, there was one called the Turkish Star Wars in Turkish, Turkish. And there are some posters out there for it. And you can actually find it on YouTube under Turkish, Turkish Star Wars. So is there English subtitles? No. Or how do they, no. It's you, purely you, you don't Turkish. want to ruin it with English subtitles. I imagine not. No, <laughs> no. The Turkish, we, we need to get that one, Tom. And then we'll, we'll ask a Turkish friend to, to put subtitles so our viewers know what's going on. But uh, uh, that's amazing. So uh, did, did Lucas ever, like, try to make trouble for these people? I think, well, actually, when Battlestar Galactica started airing on television, Lucasfilm sued that Universal. Blatant. That one was blatant. That was, right. yeah. No, no. Everything looked the same. I remember it that. Was done by the same special effects right. technicians. No, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. Anyway, so, but the remake did not look like that, right? Of uh, Battlestar Galactica. No, they right. learned their lesson. Right, right. So uh, back to your story. You were working at Lucasfilm. You already had a sizable collection. Which kept growing after the prequels and the special editions had come right. out. So um, I was faced with a problem. I knew I'd be retiring from Lucasfilm in 2011. And... Um, I had a lot of stuff in boxes still. Right. We had a second chicken barn. A chicken barn. A chicken barn. That's what the museum is housed in. Two, three chicken that barns. beautiful facility I went to was a chicken barn. Was a chicken barn. It had egg laying. Egg had 20,000 chickens up until the early 1970s. Oh, my goodness. The whole area was chicken farms. I did not smell any chicken manure when Let's I went there. Let's hope not. No, you did a good job cleaning it up. <laughs> and painting and, and fixing. Paint, and no, it's a gorgeous changing. facility. So we thought, what would be better? We had friends come over and associates and things like that to see the collection, but it was just sort of on these shelves. Right. And um, my number two, Ann Newman, 
had been with me for a couple of years and she was doing the inventory for Rancho Obi-Wan. Right. And we talked about turning it into a nonprofit and being able to do tours, right. which is what we do now. And so we expanded the museum. We added this back barn facility and added some really nice touches and became a nonprofit of 501c3. Very nice. So just so our viewers know, he's talking about chicken houses and barns and things. But from the outside, it looks like it looks like a commercial like warehouse type thing. Yeah. And on the inside, it's gorgeous. And we're, we're going to be putting up images of that. But uh, it's incredible. So you can uh, people can go for a fee and get a tour. But uh, you also host events there as well, right? Right. We have our annual gala once a year with up to 150 people there. My goodness. And we've had other events. We've done events for Nissan when they put out their Nissan Rogue when the movie right. came out. Right. And um, we have birthday parties and smaller events, larger events. How fun. It is a lot of fun. So they could learn uh, all about this at uh, RanchoObiWan.org. Yes. Right. RanchoObiWan.org. We're going to put that up early so you guys know. We'll put it up again later. And uh, let's get back to the film. And then when we come back, we're going to find out how you did your first building. Right? Okay. All right. Off we go to Star Odyssey. I, apologies in advance. Hi, this is Don from Maxwell, New Mexico. I only recently discovered your channel, and I'm delighted. It's so bad, it's good, if that makes sense. A little gal, you need to show her without all that makeup on. I think she's the star there. Okay, my friend, good job. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Ms. Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. think that's what it is a 55 gallon drum it was a 55 gallon drum yeah that's no way to make a robot obscene no and it's i suppose it's their version of r2d2 right yeah i've got a lot of r2d2 i saw that no you, you've got the most r2d2s i've ever seen one human ever have oh there are people who specialize in certain things in star wars so there are r2d2 collectors right just r2d2s nothing else hundreds if not thousands of them every size every imaginable. size from this big to this big now is the largest r2 unit you've ever seen only the life size i've seen a blow up r2 unit ah. that is about twice the size right. of the right of the electronic one that is used in the film. Somebody, one of these R2 guys you're talking about, needs to build a giant one where a team of people could get inside and drive it. Sort of like a Japanese robot. Yes. Very and cool. And you know a thing or two about those. Well, I, I did a, um, I was 
Lord Mayor of London in a docu, a mockumentary right. that was made many years ago by my friend Don Bees in Petaluma. Right. And it was all about the true Hollywood story of R2-D2 about how he got down on his luck, became a drunk and a drug user. Lucasfilm approved this. This actually aired on Fox. Oh my goodness. And um, they sold the DVD of it under the dome. It was great, very funny. I'm surprised George would let something like that fly. He has a sense of humor. It would never happen now with the whole Disney thing. What do you think about that, Disney owning? Well, I, uh, you know, when I was told about that the first time, I said it makes sense. Right. I mean, George wasn't going to leave the company to anybody. No. Um, his kids weren't interested in running it, and they were too young anyway. And Disney was the place where Star Wars probably should have gone in the first place. Right. But Disney wasn't doing those kinds of films back then. Right. However. <laughs> well, I mean, the TV series that they've done have been amazing. The, the Mandalorian. Mandalorian right. is great. I right. love Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right. Um, and there are some of the animated series, like the Clone Wars series, has been spectacular. Right. George worked on that with the director, Dave Filoni, who is now working with Jon Favreau doing the other series. Right. So it's, uh, it's come they're, full they're, circle. They're still getting their feet wet, I think, with, with the films. They're still trying to get it there's right. A lot of, uh, there's a lot of differences in the fan community about the quality of the films, the sequels. Right. And so I think they're going to go back and they're going to make independent films, um, not, oh, really? a, not a trilogy. The Skywalker story is finished, so these will be new characters, new aliens, new planets. Right. It'll be interesting. And then fr from that point, I, everything, everybody should be happy with that because it's like new. It's not like yeah. the changing something that... Uh, or redoing or right. rebooting. Exactly. You right. don't want that. Right. So uh, on the collection, all right, so now you're in three buildings... How far are you going to go? That's it. We also have an off-site warehouse of 7,000 square feet. Oh, my goodness. Which is full. It's full, 7,000 square feet. So what I, goes there? What, how do you decide what goes? Excuse me a second. The, the mansion has a lot of space. Do you, do you have any storage For a Star areas? Wars collection? Yes, if it's good stuff. <laughs> if you bring the good stuff. Like you had a speeder outside of your front, front door. Yeah, it's what sort of seen. What's the story on that? It's sort of seen, it's an actual, the actual base of the speeder was done by ILM guys on their free time for a fan. Oh. And so I inherited that and got some people to fix it up. And right. it, it has since been weathered and the windshield has sort of melted. Right. So things well, outside don't last no, too long. No, but you know, it, it's got to look, it, it makes it look like you operate a Star Wars junkyard where that is like an old speeder that somebody liked to commission and it's now parked in your front yard and you're gonna fix it up one day. If my mother was still with us, she would say that the inside of the museum was a Star Wars junkyard. No, no, the inside, the inside is pristine. The inside is pristine. The outside, he's got, and what's the other thing? It was like a, a ride. The, yeah, the, it was a bootleg uh, X-Wing fighter from a carnival back in the 80s. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Found it on eBay. Incredible. You never know what you're going to find That's on right. eBay. That's right. Well, you never know what you're going to find on Creature Features like this film, which we have to get back to. But uh, when we come back, let's, uh, let's find out uh, what you are doing next as far as uh, adventures in the world of collecting. And uh, right now we've got to get back to this Star Odyssey thing. But uh, hopefully it will end soon. Right? Right, Tom? Well. Soon. All right. See you on the other side of the break.
Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. I am confused, Steve Sansweet from. Rancho Obi-Wan. Those are supposed to be lightsabers. Well, you know, even George Lucas sometimes called them laser swords in the very beginning. So right, wooden yeah. lightsabers. But be did a he difficult. actually use wedges of wood painted silver? No, he used uh, camera flash tube right. things. No, he, he put some thought into the process. Yeah, well, he had a lot These of good blokes. people working for him. Right. These blokes did not. I'm pretty no, sure they were the just people trying. who made this film... I, I don't think they did any research. I think this film took a long time to make, probably at least three weeks. Uh, right, <laughs> yes. All right, well, uh, we're going to be wrapping that one up soon, but uh, uh, your stuff, uh, you, as uh, as far as uh, collectibles go, you don't just have figurines and things like that. You've got a massive library. We've got a wonderful library with books from 30 countries, books in Braille, uh, all Goodness. kinds of books, from kids' books to young adult books right. to the novelizations, all kinds of thousands of comic books from, again, all over the world. Right. And uh, magazines, again, worldwide. And then we also have an arcade, which where I we end that. the tour. Right. So we have the original Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi um, uh, visual games. And we have pinball games. The very first arcade game was from Australia. Australia. In 1982, we've got that. The first one was in 1982. It took, it took what, five years for somebody to make a video game? Yeah. The what video games came out in 1983, Star uh -huh. Wars and Empire. And then in 1984, a year after Jedi, the Jedi game came out. I didn't know it took so long. I suppose back in the 70s, all they had was like Pong, right? You know, That's where was, it started. There was not a lot of technology back in the 70s for computers. Pong and the Odyssey game from right. Magnavox. No, I remember. Those, those were fun. Those yeah. I mean, 
It was better than going to an arcade and spending quarters. I, you know, I wonder if arcades are the same price today. I doubt it. You think it's like a dollar a shot to or, play a game? Or more. Oh, my goodness. No, that's ridiculous. And I thought a quarter our was games a are, Our games are all set on free play at Rancho. Of course, because he's got the key to the coin box. Yes, I do. Right, right, <laughs> right. That's incredible. Well, what do you say we wrap up this film, and then uh, when we come back, we're going to find out uh, what you're doing next. Okay. All right, off we go to the end of Star Odyssey, and uh, it couldn't come soon enough. Hollywood's dead. Oh, no. No, no, I'm, I'm quite glad. I didn't like the man. No, Hollywood. There's no spaceman named Hollywood. Would, would George Lucas ever name anybody Hollywood in one of his movies? No, but I Luke know. Skywalker See? comes close. That's true, eh? No, he's right. He's right. What did you think of the film? No? Didn't like it? Did you like anything about the film? No. Uh, the duck-faced robots. I like them, too. Yeah. They were now, weird. I, I suppose if you're going to make a robot, a duck face would be a good choice of face. <laughs> no, but uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll show this movie. You know, this is the second time we've shown this film. I completely forgot about it. But uh, we'll show it again in like five years. So it, we'll see you in five years on that movie. But uh, enough about that. Uh, Mr. Steve, what are you doing next? Well, we're uh, looking for more tours to come. Right. Uh, we have a... a Pent up demand for tours from you people. Do. We expect people internationally to start arriving right. soon. No, and all the Creature Feature fans are going to want to come see you. Yes. Right. And so we will welcome them. Let's put that up one more time. It's RanchoObiWan.org. And all the info is there, right? Absolutely. And I know you, you run a very nicely well-written blog. And we have a virtual museum online, and yes. a virtual museum, so you can take so a tour. You, there's a lot of video that you can right. see There's online. There's a fantastic video of the, the, the Guinness Book of World Records one. Yes. That is absolutely fantastic. Wonderful tour. This is a very funny man. He, no, he's, he's quite the joker, you know, because he does not take all the things he has in his facility seriously, and he makes jokes about them on the video just for you. I was, I was laughing out loud. Indeed. I was lolling we've got a, at your video. We've got a lot of fan-made objects, and they're done with a lot of Those humor. Those were some of mine. my favorites. Yeah, mine too. No, no, no. That was incredible. The, the bicycle. That was incredible. He's got a bicycle. It looks like Pee Wee Herman's bicycle, but it's got a Darth Vader head. and uh, The Empire Strikes Bike. That's a perfect name. See? Humor. Humor. All right, Steve, you're amazing. Thank you so much for letting us in your facility. My pleasure. And coming up to our facility and uh, hopefully we'll have you on again soon when you've got something new to tell us about sounds good all right as far as you guys go thank you so much for staying up late and watching us you know they could have been watching reruns of get smart and instead they decided to watch <laughs> our show so that 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 makes me want to say i love you and see you next week and we'll have another guest another movie don't know who don't know what but it will be fun see you then so steve you know i'm thinking you rent this place out for parties. I'm thinking of throwing a Star Trek party. I don't think the Force would be with you. <laughs> <laughs>